r slash ask reddit what life altering things should every human ideally get to experience at least once in their lives the night sky without any light pollution it's quite sad how many people in cities don't get to admire the grandeur of our near cosmos i don't usually call this out but hot damn thanks for the gold silver and my most upvoted post ever best cake day present the reason knowing about space and our place in the universe is so important is that it fundamentally can change your perspective about everything. HTTPS colon slash slash www YouTube com watch v equals mlt 7 w 6 qdq vic astronomer here. If you've never done this, here is a worldwide map of dark sky conditions. I would say pick anything that is green or darker to see the Milky Way, but obviously darker is better. Also check the phase of the moon and go when it's a few days from new. The moon is really bright. Once out there put a red filter over a flashlight, and keeps green gazing to a minimum. They really screw with your night vision. And each peak takes 10-15 minutes to get your eyes adjusted again. Better to print a star chart out and use the red flashlight to learn your basics to keep that temptation to a minimum. Imo. But I'm old school. Edit. Congrats guys. We killed the website. Consider using the remind me. Bot to remember to check it later when it's hopefully online again. My country only has few blue and dark green spots and none close to where I live. Is there anything I can do besides travel somewhere else? Living single and alone. It's a very specific kind of freedom but a touch of fear. I can do whatever I want. At the same time if something bad happened it might be a bit before anyone even noticed. I had never lived alone until I was in my late 30s. I was terrified to live by myself. Thought I would be scared and so lonely all the time. But it turns out that it is the greatest thing ever. I don't know how I will ever be able to live with another person again. I joke that if I ever get Ray married we will have to have separate residences. Living apart together is a real thing. I think that would be my ideal. Too much stress goes into trying to share space with someone you simply want to love. And couples say they become less complacent and more appreciative about spending time together because it's not just a default that you'll be home together. Be as shit as it is. And I wouldn't wish it upon many people. Heartbreak. I feel like a lot of personal growth can stem from it. It also makes you way more sensitive and understanding of others who are hurting and suffering. Empathy is far more important and powerful than sympathy. Yes, this is crucial. Knowing how to pick yourself back up and put yourself back together. Knowing that you may never have the answer to why this person left you. And then gaining strength from the whole experience. These are things that show us what we're made of and things that we can look back on when we face another challenge. You can say I've been through this before and I know I can handle it. Going through this now. I've grown a lot but the scariest thought is what if I don't find love again. Eating healthy food for like 2 months straight. You never realize how shitty you feel if you've been feeling that way literally your entire life. Also helps you realize how insanely addictive sugar slash fast food is. Once you go back to it the cravings kick in immediately. At least in my experience. I've said this before on reddit and people literally message me saying I'm full of shit. Like okay. You don't have to do it. Just saying living off pizza and soda can make you feel like garbage. I'd been living pretty much exclusively off pizza, instant noodles and beer since uni, mainly due to not giving a shit about anything at all. I started eating healthily only one month ago and I've already lost my pot belly and gone from feeling depressed and anxious all day every day to actually feeling the zest of life once again finally. If I felt 2 stroke 10 every day before I almost immediately went to feeling like a 7 or 8 stroke 10. The difference is phenomenal. Travel alone doesn't need to be long but i think it requires a skill to be alone and feel comfortable about it not many people take the leap to go and or don't have the skill it is very valuable to feel comfortable being alone being in a crowd for example most people are shocked when i tell them i went to europe for a month and did seven different countries over a week of that was by myself in prague and vienna at the time i was 26 i'm female which is what usually scared people OMG you traveled by yourself in a foreign country. Dot. That was probably the best week of the trip. I never even thought twice about it. Never felt unsafe. And did some things I probably would have never done experienced if I was traveling with a group. I would actually love to do it again. I. Male 26. 
spend 5 days in France last year by myself. I still get shocked reactions when I tell people. People are also shocked when I tell them that French people were very nice. Probably because I learned enough French to at least politely turn the conversation to English without just screaming English. Being utterly lost or similarly in a hopeless situation. And getting yourself out of it with persistence and endurance. When you hit rock bottom, one of three things can happen. You can crash. You can bounce. You can break right through it and fall to an even lower rock bottom. Try to do option 2. Sigh. Option 3. How deep does this even go? A long road trip with friends. It's a bonding experience being in a little metal box with a group of friends for hours at a time trying to get somewhere together. You'll drive each other crazy. You'll make each other laugh. It's truly a wonderful experience. On the bucket list for sure. My friends and I still do this every year. We're old guys in our 50s now. We've been doing it since our 20s. Go somewhere isolated enough at night that you can see the full skyscape. Including the band of the Milky Way. Don't remember where exactly, but me and my dad found this volunteer run observatory somewhere on a peak in Oregon. They had a giant scope operated by a few people, and some hobbyists and students who had their own gear they'd let you use. But the coolest shit was being able to look up with your own eyes and see part of the Milky Way. I cannot describe to you the awe I felt. Everyone there was very passionate about astronomy and so helpful too. So the whole thing was an unforgettable experience. Edit. Pretty sure it was Pine Mountain Observatory. Thanks to the comment that reminded me. Guess it's owned by U of O so there was a mix of students, volunteers, and staff. It might be closed due to the winter storm but if you're in town and have a clear night, go check it out. As someone who grew up where you can see the Milky Way it is so weird to me that some people have never seen it. Even though I could see it on any non-cloudy night as a kid I stopped AR learn it will go out to a soybean field during any meet or shower to enjoy the show. The night sky is such a cool thing that somehow makes you feel very small but at the same time really connected with earth. Being with a family member while they pass away, I know, I know, this sounds weird but I have experienced both and had so much more closure when I was able to be there when my grandmother passed away, when my mom was in hospice and started declining and eventually passed away, the facility couldn't even be bothered to call me you and Todd I learned the next day, I lived 10 minutes away, was the POC for all medical decisions and worked my entire life at the time around doing my best to be by her side when she passed. I still feel so cheated and pissed off about it. Edited, I wanted to thank everyone for their kind words. This comment really blew up. I'm so sorry that some of you have had rough experiences with losing loved ones. But I'm glad that it has sparked a discussion around death and dying. If anyone is having a rough time right now, I'm a good listener. I have mixed feelings about this. On one hand, I was grateful to be with my dad to the very end. Not many people get to go out surrounded by your loved ones, but my dad did. It was a gift. On the other hand, it was honestly traumatizing. I can't explain just how horrific it is to watch your loved one just die. Edit. I wanted to send some love to all of you sharing your experiences, especially those who just recently lost a loved one. Words don't really help, but no you are not alone. 3. I had the same thing with my mother, I was glad to be able to be there and hold her hand as she took her last breath, but to hear the death rattles and the hours leading up to it took a while to get out of my head. Total isolation I'm talking traveling out to a remote location far far away from civilization and far away from anyone else just you and the world around you all alone and not another soul in sight it's such a bizarre yet powerful feeling. Here you are, completely free from the constraints of civilization. Free from your obligations. Free from your routines. There's nothing holding you back now except yourself. You're experiencing life at its purest. I went on one hell of a bush walk not too long ago that took me deep into a forest that very few people have been through. There was a moment where I was sitting on this fallen tree where it hit me just how truly far away and isolated I was. And with that, just how far away all my problems were too. Out here. It was just me and the trees. It really seems to put life back into perspective when you inevitably have to head back and re-enter civilization. The juxtaposition is something else. There's a place I go to often to completely switch off. No phones. 
No contact with the outside world. I love it. It's like a detox. I myself also forgot a phone when gone for a poo. Failure. You'd be surprised how many people constantly have their life fixed for them and never have to fail at anything. Failure allows us to learn coping skills, resilience, problem solving, determination. So many skills that many people today just don't have. Absolutely agree on this. Failure taught me it's not the end of the world if you fail. Failure is just XP grinding to level up. Garlic bread. I could eat a very unreasonable amount of garlic bread if given the opportunity. I don't think that would be unreasonable at all. Standing in front of a classroom trying to teach. Friends who teach in the elementary secondary system have the same complaints as professors. Everyone has a criticism, complaint or gentle suggestion to improve, but have no idea what is involved in getting all of the regulatory requirements. Getting up in front of a class and ensuring that the yellows are met in a way that satisfies federal, state and university administrators while also engaging the students. It's getting worse and worse. 2. Amen. I did it for 2 years in a high school. Anyone who teaches has my respect because I'll never do it again. Same here. I'll be the first to admit I was a terrible teacher who knew duck all about classroom management or how to plan consistently good lessons. But my hat's off to those who stuck with it. Working in retail, major city emergency room, police, and fast food. It's always easy to assume we know better, until we work there, and deal with some ignorant people who just wanna wreck a fool with anyone and everyone. I worked at Burger King when I was 15 and in high school. My boss at the time, a great dude, said you never know how someone's day is going or what they've been through. So if someone has a bad attitude just keep smiling and help them along. Now that I'm much older and run a sales division one always think back to that guy in that comment and also that job. Make sure to treat your fast food, wait staff, bartenders, and etc kindly because you never know how many a-holes they've had to put up with to get to you. I always try to- I probably wasn't as mean as I felt I was but I was in a considerable amount of pain when the cashier asked me how my day was going. I think I said something in a pained or grumpy tone of it's going. I still feel bad about it. Everyone unless otherwise proven deserves to be treated with the same level of respect. Stand on top of a mountain. One of my absolute life changing experiences is hiking a mountain in the fog. Me and a friend hiked a few thousand feet, and when we hit the peak we had just come over the fog line. There was an old guy at the top with us, and he saw that we were in awe. He pointed to the northeast. See that other mountain range poking out above the clouds? That's Tahoe. Tahoe was 150 miles away, give or take. Something about being exhausted after intense physical exertion with your best friend, in a surreal landscape, and then having a seemingly impossible vision pointed out to you on top of that, was otherworldly. May I ask which mountain? I wish everyone got to experience lucid dreaming at least once. It's such an amazingly interesting state to be in just for the fact that you're inside of a dream. You're fully conscious that you're now someone else and in a body that isn't your physical body yet you can touch and feel the dream world as if it was the real world. Edit. For people experiencing sleep paralysis or is scared of it, here's something I wrote for you. Edit 2. How to start lucid dreaming. For anybody interested in doing this, Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming by Stephen Laberge is a very good book that teaches you how to do it by the predominate expert in the field, and it's a dirt cheap paperback. Just bought it off Amazon. Thank you for the recommendation. I loved trying to lucid dream but would like to get better at it. The feeling of having mastered something. Piano. Poetry. Writing. Some video game. Coding. Anything really. There is a special self-knowledge that comes from having mastered something that everyone really needs to know. Do we ever really truly and completely? I am positive no matter how good I am at something if I ever am. I will never feel it can't be even better. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.